Hi everyone, I'm Sarah from Peak Nordic Walking and I've popped outside today to have a little chat about footwear, hopefully to give you some helpful hints about what footwear you might want to consider, um, particularly if you're coming Nordic Walking for the first time. So I've brought a selection of my footwear, um, some of it's a little bit grubby so please don't judge me, um, and I'll go through the options that I've got here and if you've got any questions at all uh, after this little video please get in touch with me, it's particularly if you're coming on any of my um, beginner sessions and ask any questions that you, you might have. So first up, what are we looking for in a shoe when we come Nordic walking? Two most important things um, are we are looking for something with a grippy sole. We're looking to have some traction through the base of the shoe. So for this reason, I'm holding um, a trail running shoe, standard trail running shoe. It's not waterproof or not Gore-Tex. Um, I'll probably use the term Gore-Tex quite a lot, but waterproof uh, is what I mean. Um, this shoe has a really nice tread on it, really nice grip. We don't want to use normal trainers with those sort of smooth soles because that's not going to give us any grip. We're going to slip and slide a, a, around potentially. So we want to have something with a bit of grip and a bit of traction. The other thing is um, this sort of shoe is really nice because it's got a slightly um, flexible sole. And the flexible sole means that for Nordic walking, we're going to be able to use all the muscles in the foot and we're going to be able to push off from the heel, get that extension through the foot and that push off through the ball of the foot, through the toes. So we want to use the whole of the foot. We want to go from the heel of the foot through to the balls, through to the toes. And so something with a flexible sole, not too flexible, but flexibility um, is going to be great for it. So for that reason, um, a lot of the time I'm in just normal trail running shoes. That's my personal preference, but it doesn't suit everybody and it doesn't suit all weather conditions either uh, or terrain, which is the other thing to think about. So that might be a good starting point if you've got something like this or approach shoes or you know just good gripped outdoor shoes they probably be absolutely ideal be comfortable in them um, and, and uh, just have a think about getting something with a grippy bottom to them all right so they're not waterproof next up is same shoe actually you can tell I'm uh, quite fond of them uh, these are grubby um, but this shoe uh, is actually uh, Gore-Tex coated so it's got Gore-Tex Gore lining so it's waterproof, um, or at least it was when I first got them, probably for about the first six months. The Gore-Tex doesn't necessarily last forever. That waterproof lining doesn't um, stay waterproof forever. And what I tend to find, and a lot of people anecdotally find, is that you'll end up with uh, the tread sort of, uh, and, the, and the sole of the foot potentially outlasting the waterproofness of that shoe. But it's a really nice thing to have a waterproof shoe. Um, for sort of slight, uh, slightly rainy uh, conditions or wet grass, it's quite nice to have that extra waterproof layer on your foot. So you might want that, but it doesn't suit everybody. Think about if the water gets in, it's got nowhere to drain necessarily. So lots of people for that reason prefer the normal, non-waterproof, non-Gore-Tex version of that type of shoe. All right, third option, um, one that a lot of us probably have lurking in our um, foot Cupboards, footwear cupboards is a, a walking boot. These are filthy, so sorry, walked the dogs this morning and yeah, I don't often clean them, but I should do, sorry. So these walking boots, super robust, really nice um, grippy sole, not so much flexibility in the sole. They'll be a tiny bit because they're not, a, they're not a sort of winter mountaineering boot, so you will get some flex through them. So they might be a really nice option for some people. If you prefer more support through the ankle, um, if you've got any toe issues and you actually need a little bit more support through your toe, you might prefer something like this, or that's just what you're comfortable wearing. Just be aware you might not, um, if you want to start, you know, really using that full um, length of the foot uh, action as you Nordic walk, as you progress, you might want something with a little bit more flexibility than that. But winter weather, more technical terrain uh, you might want to actually opt, opt for a boot over a shoe it does depend so we're thinking about the type of shoe grippy is the big thing grippy um, sole to the foot waterproof non-waterproof if the waterproof uh, layer doesn't last forever anyway what other option might you have well here we go waterproof socks um love them or loathe them um i love them my husband 
does not like waterproof socks at all but he doesn't get on with them he just prefers not to have them but i love them um this make is showers pass i've got a couple of pairs of these which i hand wash lovingly um to extend their life a little bit uh, and i find these are absolutely brilliant they keep my feet quite warm give a really nice waterproof layer and i can wear them with any footwear so my walking boots aren't really waterproof anymore so i tend to add that if the conditions dictate that that would be ideal or I add them to my trail running shoes um, if they're the non-waterproof type. So that's a really nice option. Other brands you'll probably be really familiar with will be the likes of Seal Skins and Yorkshire Company, I think. Uh, 360 Dry, off the top of my head. Um, have a little Google. Uh, other search engines exist, other brands exist and have a little look. All right, oops, sorry, didn't mean to rock that. So that is some shoes. That is waterproof socks or no waterproof socks. And the final thing you might have lurking and might want to consider for different types of weather are gaiters. Um, they can be really useful for certain terrain to keep sort of, um, I don't know, sand, pebbles, debris out of the top of the, um, the shoe. So these will sit, these are little shorties, they'll sit nicely on the shoe and just enclose around the ankle or further up the leg there. And that just means that the worst of the um, sort of um, mud or stones won't be falling into the top of your shoe. Add a little bit of waterproofing as well, quite nice in snow, snowy conditions, slushy conditions, those are quite nice to consider. And the ones that we'll be more familiar with and quite a few people, especially if you're into walking, will probably already have, are um, the sort of more traditional sized gaiters. Um, these are waterproof ones, um, quite nice. I don't wear them that much unless it's sort of winter, winter um, sort of climbing, winter, winter walking type of conditions. They will go further up the leg, add a nice bit of insulation. Um, they'll keep your trousers nice and um, nice and clean for when you stop for your coffee, which is always a bonus. Um, a little bit of waterproofing as well and they'll stop the worst of the weather coming in through the top of the boot so big tip for these as well depending on the weather and depending on your footwear and personal preference so that's it really i think i've covered everything just to go through it once more we're just looking for a shoe with a nice tread a nice grip on the sole um, flexibility as much or as little as you want and as your foot needs Cortex or waterproofing or no waterproofing depends what you've got, depends on what you like um, and whether or not perhaps you get on with waterproof socks, but I think they're a game changer. Um, and then again, shoot, uh, shoot, shoots, that's going to be a mixture of shoes and boots. So <laughs> boots or shoes, um, again, might depend on the terrain you're walking on, how technical it is or personal preference depending on how much support you need around the ankle or perhaps for your toes so just a few things to consider I hope it's been helpful uh, any questions please drop me a line and if you're coming along to any of my beginner sessions and have any questions about what to wear uh, on your on your legwear wise or footwear wise please get in touch and give me a shout see you all soon thanks